I, I think that's a fair question to ask. Um, again, you know, with with uh, if we rewind the clock back to March and April when when these policies were implemented and, and the Fed was really looking to to stabilize the markets, right? We we saw you know uh, spreads widening out, you know, thousand basis points or more. We saw markets completely freezing up. Um, if, if we sort of look at the condition of, of global credit markets and U.S. credit markets now, that's certainly no longer the case. Again, you know, it, the access to markets has been completely restored to, to issuers across the credit quality spectrum. Um, if you look at the degree of recovery, um, you know, U.S. investment grade spreads are, are sort of 90 to 100 percent back to, to pre-COVID kind of market levels. If we go down in credit quality, again, in, in sort of U.S. Um, high yield, the, that recovery is give or take, let's say, 85 percent. Um, so I, I think it's a fair question to ask, you know, how much more does the Fed really need to intervene now that the markets are functioning normally again? Um, yeah. But as investors look for, for opportunities for themselves, I, I think what really stands out, and, and I sort of alluded to it, but, you know, with, with fundamentals really have held up much better than expected, much better than feared. Um, and so in this very low yield kind of world, um, you know, Asian credit is, is really offering very attractive returns. And, and, and that's up and down the, the, the rating spectrum. Um, investment grade pickup over U.S. investment grade is, is substantial. And it's just basically at sort of relatively historic wides. Um, and if you go to the bottom end of the market, um, you know, Asian single Bs are offering spreads of 850 basis points. I mean, it's just it's mm. absolutely tremendous. So with, with a 2 percent default rate and, and, mm. and access to markets largely restored, uh, it's it's incredibly attractive. So, um, you know, as investors look and search for yield, it, this seems an obvious mm. place for people to go. Paul Grimoyne, thank you joining this conversation. You said the markets are now functioning normally. Are they? Uh, given the fact that all this liquidity has, ra has risen the risk, uh, or rather raised the risk of uh, excesses being built? Oh, that question might be slightly above my pay grade. Um, I'll do my best. I, 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 Look, I think one indication of, of you know, excesses possibly emerging again is, is, is the somewhat uh, breakdown in correlations between treasuries and risk. Um, again, it, when you see, you know, equity markets continuing to grind to new highs, uh, when you see credit spreads, you know, largely returning to, to sort of low end of historic ranges and, and you see treasuries, you know, 10 year treasury sort of stuck in this, this 60 to 70 basis point range. Um, Again, if you look back to historic correlations, you would expect to see Treasury yields widening um, in response to this. But again, the Fed's intervention is, is keeping those yields relatively soundly um, uh, anchored at this point. Um, but you know, first and foremost, and, and again, I'll, I'll tie it back to, to the you know to the bit you played from from Jamie Dimon's remarks. I think the Fed's and, and central bank reaction all over the world. The, the, the first and foremost objective at the time, and if we go back to March and April, was was to stabilize markets and to you know preserve access to to funding. We had you know liquidity freezing up and whatnot, and and so to avoid that financial crisis compounding the recession that we saw from from the COVID shutdowns, it was critical that that central banks intervene in the way they did.